This episode is brought to you by CuriosityStream. Get free access to Nebula, our new streaming service, when you sign up for CuriosityStream at the link below. One of the most exciting and stressful periods of modern history was the frantic race between the US and the Soviet Union to beat each other to the moon. The space race was a time of intense distrust, mutual antagonism, and technological experimentation. This cosmic competition had its origins in the struggle for ballistic missile-based weapons that occurred between the two superpowers after World War II. The natural progression from ICBMs was rockets that could go even further, which meant into space. Neither country wanted the other to develop space-based weapons capabilities, and they certainly didn't want to look like they weren't as technologically advanced as their arch-nemesis. And so the Americans and the Soviets battled it out in the race to achieve firsts in space. The first object in space, the first man in space, the first man on the moon. But unbeknownst to these titans of industry, another nation was quietly preparing to beat them both to the moon, and to Mars. On October 24, 1964, the former British Protectorate of Northern Rhodesia won its independence and became known as Zambia. The fledgling government went on the record as supporting positive neutrality during the Cold War, but one man had different plans. Edward Makuka Nkoloso, a former schoolteacher and revolutionary veteran, announced that he had plans to build his own space program and was already training 12 would-be Afronauts, his term for African astronauts. An article in Time magazine even gave him a mention, saying that his training program involved spinning his teenage recruits around a tree in a barrel and teaching them to walk on their hands. Quote, the only way humans can walk on the moon. On the surface, this story seems so bizarre that you'd think it was just an old urban legend. But believe it or not, this all actually happened, and we have footage from old news pieces to prove it. Nkoloso was happy to give interviews to curious foreign news outlets, and provided examples of his rigorous training program, which included general fitness routines as well as zero-gravity training, which was simulated by rolling the Afronauts down a bumpy hill in a barrel, and swinging them from trees to simulate the feeling of weightlessness. They even had a makeshift rocket, complete with a hole for breathing. Nkoloso had originally considered using a catapult to launch his rocket, but decided that was too primitive a solution. Once the Afronauts had made it to the moon, they intended to continue to Mars, securing their place as the dominant space program by beating both the Soviet Union and the United States to the Red Planet. The tiny Zambian space program also had a plan to contend with the native Martians. They would send a specially trained space girl, 12 cats, and a missionary to help convert the Martians to Christianity, though they wouldn't force conversion, of course. If you're wondering what the cats were for, you aren't alone. One reporter asked how the space kitties would be used, and Nkoloso was glad to explain, saying that they were partly for companionship, but mostly to be used as, quote, technological accessories, by which he meant his Afronaut would toss the cats out of the spacecraft when she reached Mars, and if the cats survived, she would know it was safe to exit the lander. Of course, none of this would be possible without funding. Nkoloso reached out to UNESCO and various foreign nations to humbly request financial assistance. Most of them didn't respond, some sent letters of encouragement and books on space science, and the only money the Zambian space program received was a 10 rupee note from a well-intentioned young Indian boy. Money troubles weren't the only stumbling block for the program. The director complained that two of his Afronauts went on a drinking spree and never came back, another joined a local song and dance group, and his one female Afronaut got pregnant and dropped out. Nkoloso was ridiculed by foreign newspapers, if they covered his work at all, and even many Zambians looked at him as if he were crazy. But many of his other countrymen had a different opinion of the eccentric rocketeer. Despite his flashy, impractical spacewear, which included a fancy cape, Nkoloso wasn't stupid. He was a very well-read schoolteacher, with a sharp mind and a highly successful past as a revolutionary. His friends and family were largely convinced that the Zambian space program was actually a bit of satirical theater played out for the world to see. The rocket was basically a trash can with an air hole. Nkoloso had read countless books on outer space. He knew that wouldn't work. His training routine looked goofy and played well for the camera. Rolling teenagers down a hill in a barrel made for a good laugh. When the program got press attention, Nkoloso would remain in character but slip in subtle condemnations of the world's superpowers, saying things like, those imperialist neo-colonialists are scared of Zambia's space knowledge. It's an absurd statement to make, except for accurately describing the big players as imperialist neo-colonialists. Some suspect this is why Nkoloso's plan for Mars included a colonialist element, the missionary, along with an absurd element, the cats. He was creating a parody of the space race and western conquest of other nations, particularly Africa. The missionary to Mars is perhaps the most on-the-nose part of the whole story. Nkoloso made a point of stressing that they would not force Christianity on the Martians, whom he described as primitive natives. This is exactly the treatment Africa had received at the hands of foreign colonizers in the past. They had been considered primitive natives and had had western religion thrust upon them, often forcefully, despite claims to the contrary. 
Nkoloso maintained that his space program was serious until his death in 1989, and maybe it was. Maybe both things can be true. Perhaps he really was a little crazy and thought that his ragtag bunch of astronauts could get to the moon and Mars, while still maintaining some of his old revolutionary spirit. The world may never know for sure, but what we do know is that once upon a time, Zambia entered the space race against two of the most powerful nations on Earth, and that's a story worth telling. If you'd like to learn more about the space race, I highly recommend you check out Race to the Moon on CuriosityStream. It's a fascinating documentary about the fear and excitement during the fight for space supremacy. If you watch my videos, you'll know that I'm a big fan of CuriosityStream. It's an online streaming service with thousands of nonfiction titles from some of the best filmmakers in the game. I've recently partnered with CuriosityStream to build my new car show, Grand Test Auto, that I host with Joseph from Real Life Lore. Grand Test Auto is available right now on Nebula, a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like CGP Grey, Polyphonic, Real Engineering, Wendover Productions, and of course, Second Thought and Real Life Lore, among others. Because we all appreciate how supportive our fans are, CuriosityStream is offering a free Nebula subscription with every purchase of a year-long CuriosityStream membership. With this bundle, you get the best of both worlds. CuriosityStream is home to high production value documentaries and non-fiction work, whereas Nebula is a place for educational YouTubers to try new things and experiment with different formats, things the YouTube algorithm would punish us for. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're offering Second Thought fans free access to Nebula when you sign up at curiositystream.com slash secondthought. By signing up for CuriosityStream, you'll be helping not just me, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create exciting new content that just wouldn't be possible on YouTube. Give it a try by signing up using the link below. I promise you'll love it.